One man. One hundred days. Two hunters. One mission. Kill or be killed. Live or die. Minecraft Manhunt. One hundred days survival. Hardcore. Better Minecraft. Directed by Michael Bay. If this is your first 100 days manhunt video, let me give you a very quick rundown. I have to survive 100 days in hardcore Minecraft, whilst my two friends will spend the entire time trying to hunt me down and kill me. If I die for whatever reason, they win. If I survive to day 100, I win. On screen is a couple of standard rules that you can quickly read. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video because it really helps out the channel. Let's begin. The rule is that they're not allowed to start until I start. And so I took off into the lush lands. Now the plan was simple. I just need to find some form of structure, whether that's a broken never portal or a graveyard or something that I can actually get a weapon from. Sadly, I was going to have to wait quite a while. I was slowly losing health as Austin, oh, uh, this is Austin, wouldn't leave me alone. However, thanks to some floor foods, I was able to heal up just a little bit. And I also found my first structure, a graveyard. Unfortunately, the only exposed chest in the entire area had nothing but bones in. Yeah, I was feeling pretty lucky. I kept running on, however, Austin decided to stop and actually search the graveyard itself. This did give me a couple of seconds to get a little bit of carrots. I also was able to get a bit of wood. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough time for me to actually craft anything. But then I found it, a pillager hunter house, which from the last 100 days of better Minecraft I knew in the loft actually had a bunch of food in. Do, do Americans say loft? I, I don't know if that's... Okay, this is a loft. That's a loft there. I had plenty of food. However, the savior of this entire run was this single piece of iron as I was able to make a shield. I did have to escape the log where I was chased down by both of them where I saw that Marvin had an iron sword and that is where the jig was up. Uh, oh yeah, th this, this is Marvin. Uh, say hello everybody. I was easily able to use my shield to block off any attacks by Marvin and Austin didn't actually have a weapon. And thanks to a mixture of the shield that I had and the wooden axe I was able to craft, I was easily able to take them both down. Wasn't the easiest first fight I've ever had, but I will take it. I even got myself full stone tools from them, so that was pretty good. And some basic leather armor, of course, but I was going to get rid of that the first opportunity I got. I grabbed a little bit of wood and then I ran for the hills and boy do I mean I ran. I ignored any structures or anything that would take my mind because my knowledge was that if I had distance, at least then, I didn't have to worry about the hunters attacking me directly. The thing is about better Minecraft, there's a lot of stuff here that will distract you and if you're not paying attention, you can easily get lost in there. So my idea was the further I were away, the more they were going to get distracted. I only really stopped to make a bed. I did find a mine shaft on day two where I got a little bit of string. I also found a nice mending book. However, due to a mixture of cave spider spawners and other mob spawners, I had to leave pretty quickly. I have to remember that I only have stone tools and leather armor. So unfortunately, I really wasn't going to last very long in here. After running a bit more, I did find a village. There was nothing really here. Though I did get some wheat. So, you know, food. Yeah. I hunted around on day three, basically just looking for animals at this point. I found myself a couple of cows, I found myself a couple of chickens, and then I found myself a nice big house, where the next day I searched through the house itself. I found a sharpness one iron sword, I got enough iron for three fourth iron, and then after getting to the top layer, you know, fighting for my life like usual, even dropped a half a heart. Ugh. I got myself some iron leggings, a second sharpness one iron sword, and um, yeah, very successful journey. Next to the big house there was was this house, which for those who don't know is called a gatekeeper house. Gatekeepers normally hold a portal that takes you into one of two dimensions, which we'll come back to a little bit later. Basically, it was a very quick way to get some very strong armor, but I'm not ready to go in there just yet, so let's head away. I did find a pillage route post where I ran through and honestly, there was nothing here. I don't even know why, uh, why I even searched around here. It was time to head underground though. On day six, I well, straight up just fell into a cave. There was a lot of iron in here. Never gonna struggle for iron again. And I also found five diamonds. So, not a bad cave. Then again, it is 1.18. What do you expect? It was on day seven where I actually headed up to the higher caves because I was very, very low on coal where I found a statue. I didn't even know this was a thing. Better Minecraft for you. Also, out of all the things to kill me, baby skeleton. Didn't didn't think it was going to be that, but uh, 
Yeah, he gave me a run for my money. I had everything needed to make an enchant table except paper. And so I headed back up on day eight looking for some more sugar cane. I was able to get enough to get me 10 bucks and then I headed back underground. I got myself some obsidian on day nine. Was about to enchant, but then I remembered. Oh yeah, lapis. It didn't take me that long to find, to be fair. On day 10, I made full protection two armor. I do need a couple more levels to get sharpness two on my sword and power two on my bow. So let's get a little bit grinding. I also needed to grind some gravel because... I had the feathers, I just didn't have the arrows or the flint, and so I was grinding some gravel, and hey, would you look at that? Three more diamonds. Nice. And after that, I made a sharpness two diamond sword, and also a sharpness one axe. I finished off my enchanted by getting a power two bow on day 12. Unfortunately, I had legitimately zero wood, and so I had to head back up to the surface to get a little bit of wood. Once I grabbed that bit, I headed back underground to make some arrows, and I finally felt safe. Felt good. Little did I know that this was the perfect timing, as as I was leaving the cave on day 13, well, hello there. Ossie was sneaking on the surface trying to get the drop on me, and very luckily he didn't, because if you knocked me back into that cave, oh boy. However, once the fighting begun, it was very clear that these two were very, very strong, and that I was not going to be able to take them head on. I so quickly the drop to half health, it was not fun. Had to run for the hills. I only really stopped to give Austin a good old arrow to the knee. Now, little did I know at the time that my advantage was going to be the thing that I spent last doing, and that was getting all the arrows, because though they both had bows, their arrows were just so limited that that was going to be the only advantage that I had. They had no choice but to charge me down and, hey, hey, you leave those seals alone, what did they do? This means war. I found a good open area with no trees or hills or cover. And I knew that I'm going to make my stand here and I'm going to take them both out. Also, did you see it? Austin getting hit from his own teammate from behind, leading to his death. <laughs> Hilarious, isn't it? Leaving just Marvin and myself in a one versus one. Marvin was happy to bow fight me at first because he was easily able to pick up the arrows that I was shooting him. But unfortunately, those arrows were, of course, incredibly limited. It also didn't help that, in my opinion, I was doing pretty well in this bow fight here. So he had no choice but to charge me head on as well. Though he did get a really good lava bucket on me. I did have to repair the flavor with my own lava bucket. And just like that, Marvin goes down. Just as the rain begins to pour, a sign of what's to come? We shall see. I made a power free bow thanks to the lads dropping them for me and then I was going to make a diamond helmet but decided no, don't think I will. I'm going to head back to the gatekeeper house and enter the new dimension. I set up shop at the gatekeeper's house on day 15 and then I did a little bit of chicken slaughter, just a little bit. I mean here we are on day 16 with a stack of raw chicken, just, just a little bit of chicken slaughter. After that I grind some gravel and uh, I didn't realize how much gravel I grind because here we are on day 17 and my diamond shovel broke so that's like over a thousand pieces of gravel I grind. I just was not paying attention. I don't know how I grind that much gravel so quickly. At least I now know it's time for me to head back. On day 18, I made all of the arrows. I cooked all of the foods and it's time for me to head into the dimension where uh, mobs are scary. Is that a freaking saber tooth? What's a saber tooth doing in here? I decided the surface wasn't for me and so I headed underground where I quickly find some pyro. Oh, uh, this is pyro. It was on day 19 where I headed even deeper into the caves where I made it a a quiet, a quit, a, a cute, we'll just call it a quiet pickaxe. Basically, the plan was for me to look for this purple ore. It goes by Charisite. God, I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly. The problem was is that there's two kinds of purple ore in this dimension. For the record, the dimension is called the Keep Right Dimension. The purple ore I'm looking for is this Charisite, as I say, but there is also a second purple ore called Falsite, which is just ironic because it's the one thing I don't need. You cannot make armor from Falsite. It is useless. I don't actually know what it's for. Here we are on day 20, where I got my 30th piece of Charisite. That's all I wanted. So it was time for me to leave and head back where it was night time. Day 29, I decided I wanted to get some golden apples and some levels. And so I headed back underground. A couple more days passed, but here's the finished project on day 32, where I had nine golden apples and 33 levels. I began cooking everything when I got back on day 33. I made full Charisite, including an axe and a sword. I got fire aspect on said sword. I was able to make all of the armor protection too. I got sharpness one on the axe. It was now time for me to go to the nether. I was searching around on day 34 looking for a lava pool. When oh Jesus! I've been bumped. 
bamboozled. Wally knocked. Knuckle has McSpazitroned. <laughs> why, do I, why do I make these scripts? Come on, man. So uh, Austin didn't have a shield. Despite all the diamonds and the fire or flame enchants, shield apparently wasn't on his list of priorities. So Austin just forgot to make a shield. Sucks to be him. It was very easy for me to bow spam him. As I mean, shields are only good to block arrows. Do not at me. However, it didn't stop him from trapping me in the water and giving me a taste of my own medicine, dropping me down to three hearts. And after making multiple attempts to get back onto the land, I had no choice but to flee because quite frankly, it was a losing battle. I just could not get back on the land. That man was never going to let me back on there. Finding a new set of land and taking the high ground, I tried to Kenobi Austin and it was working until Marvin was being a sneaky little sausage and snuck up behind me, forcing me to run or swim again. But then I decided, you know what? No. Tired of running. If I run now, then I will never get the honor and privilege that I want. I mean, to be fair, the last time I did a standoff against them, I won. So who's saying that this can't happen again? They went back to their old tactics, mainly Marvin trying to be a sneaky little sausage to sneak up to me on the island. Unfortunately, that didn't work. And so when he tried to take me head on, well, a little bit of irony here. So remember how last time Marvin shot Austin and I was able to kill Austin because of it? Yeah, so this the other way around this time. Austin shot Marvin, lowering his health enough for me to be able to take him out. A swap of who got hit and who did the hitting, but really the same result. It was now Austin's time to charge me, but with no shield again. Bow spam. However, he did force me to chase after him because he's a coward! I mean, I guess I am bow spamming him, so I can't really... You know, it's not the point, not the point. After sitting on the land yet again, he was able to bow spam me in the water again. However, I was able to lure him into the water, and though he did get me pretty low, I was able to outlast his onslaught and survive yet again another fight. I'm never letting him catch me in the water again. Jesus. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, I was going to the nether. On day 35, I found myself a broken nether portal, and I entered the nether. I very quickly got 30 levels. I was actually kind of impressed at how quickly I got this, and then just left. I only want levels for the time being. We'll come back later. I headed back to the gatekeeper's house on day 36, where just there was a bunch of ghouls and revenants, and I'm not really sure why this was the case, but uh, yeah, I guess just everything was there. I did a level 30 enchant on my diamond pickaxe, where I got efficiency and I'm breaking. Remember that mending book I got all those ways away? Well, I put it onto this pickaxe, and so I should never need a new pickaxe as long as I keep watch of the durability. I also combined one of my bows to one of the hunter's bows as the hunters had flame and I didn't. And so I was able to get power four and flame one on my bow. And then I was going to go back to where I set up the portal, but then I realized that there was actually a lava pool literally 50 blocks away from the gatekeeper's house and uh yeah i don't know how i missed that the first time but hey we have ourselves a never portal after heading in the plan was actually to get some ancient debris where i found a mine shaft a never mine shaft a mine shaft but in the never i'm not against it it looks kind of cool there was even ancient debris in the walls and stuff so i got myself a little bit of ancient debris only three so far but you know it's a start digging around a little longer it was day 43 that's right a solid nine days later i got myself 21 more pieces of ancient debris. It's time for me to head home and cook up some neverite. I was actually investigating better neverite. So basically there is a way to make your gear neverite, but there are now new tiers of neverite. You have play neverite, neverite iron, neverite gold, neverite emerald, and neverite diamond. All you need to know is that it's tiered neverite armor. And so obviously neverite diamond is the best and they all are slowly worse. And so I made the decision to make five pieces of Neverite gold. Unfortunately, this isn't exactly the same as how normal Neverite works. Normally, you could just put it onto diamond armor, but it didn't let me do it. And I figured out that the way to make your Neverite into Neverite gold, emerald, or diamond is you have to make your diamond armor Neverite, which then turns into Neverite iron, which turns into Neverite gold, which turns into Neverite emerald, which turns into Neverite diamond. Basically, I need every single Neverite piece under the sun. At this moment in time, I need 10 more pieces of Neverite. <sighs> Back to the never I go. Here we are on day 58 where I got enough never right. I was running back where I found myself two foxhounds in the never. Really should have rhymed that. And this is the first time I've actually used foxhounds. I don't remember who told me this, but somebody in my last better Minecraft video told me that I can tame these by just giving them coal. And so I have myself some foxhounds. Now, usually I call a pack of wolves some version of a pack, but these are foxhounds. But I can't really think of anything fox pun related. And so so, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I introduce the pack out of hell. Like a pack out of hell. 
I got back on day 59 cooking some netherite. I enchanted a level 30 on a bow where I got infinity. And then combined enchanted with some books. I made a sharpness fall, fire aspect sword, and repaired the diamond armor that I got from the hunters in the last fight. And many a combined later, I had full gold netherite armor. May have forgot to put the ingots on my sword. That is a classic Haven and oopsie daisy. And now it was time to breed the foxhounds. At the time, I was under the impression that you can only breed them using rotten flesh this was not the case but i went underground because i wanted to get a bit more gold and i also wanted to see if i could find some zombies to get well rotten flesh i got enough gold to get 10 golden apples by day 61 so i, I got shmoving day 62 i made myself the 10th golden apple now i wish i could tell you what happened on day 63 and 64 but unfortunately this is the class of case of this is the footage i would show you if i had it AKA, I don't have the footage. Luckily, I restarted my footage on day 65 where I was casually walking through the plains where suddenly, hunters, yeah. However, this time, things were different. I had full Neverite gold armor and I had the pack out of hell. Like the pack out of hell. The Neverite armor basically completely avoided knockback and I was ready to take them on. The best part about this as well is that they would normally kill my wolves with lava and the pack out of hell. Like a pack out of hell. Do not take damage from lava or fire. They are the perfect pack. Also, it was really funny that I was able to get rid of Austin's water. And thanks to my flame weapons, I basically put him in the most impossible situation possible. Basically, I did not leave him alone. I knew that if I was able to kill Austin, I'd be able to deal with Marvin afterwards. And so I charged him and I set him on fire. And I charged him and I set him on fire. I got him trapped in a small cave and me and the pack out of hell. Like a pack out of hell just would not let him out. Fortunately, it wasn't enough to kill him at this point, but I knew that if I just kept doing this, it was going to work, and it took multiple attempts, and I got him low on so many occasions. But eventually, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even kill him. I actually froze, and a creeper got him, and uh, I'm not gonna, I mean, he died, I'm not gonna complain. And then Marvin came in and Marvin tried to fight me, but Marvin did even worse. I mean, I so quickly was able to put Marvin down. But here's, here's the beauty of this fight. Here's the glory of this fight. Out of everything that was killed or hurt or damaged, two foxhounds survived. So I'm able to rebuild the pack out of hell. Like a pack out of hell. It's a good fight. Probably only one more left. Let's get shmoving. On day 66, I started heading back to the gatekeeper's house where I kept killing all of the animals. Turns out I don't need to breathe the pack out of hell. With just rotten flesh, I can use whatever food I want. I don't know why I was under the impression that I needed rotten flesh, but hey, I got all the food I needed. I got plenty of shmeats by day 67. It's time to head back. On day 60, I check Neverite stuff again. There is two more layers I need to make, so I need 10 more Neverite ingots. Oh yeah, it was also this day that I made the Neverite Golden Sword. I don't know why, I genuinely don't know why I didn't do that the first time. The next stop was me to make Emerald Neverite Armor, and so I decided to start by getting some Emeralds. I only need 20. And so finding an Extreme Hills, I dug down and started looking for some Emeralds. Between day 70 and 74, I was able to obtain 50 emeralds and I did get over four stacks of gold as well. I initially wasn't gonna go for gold but I'm really grateful that I got as many as I did. Day 75 was just a bunch of grindy stuff. I was cooking some gold. I was breeding some packs. I was cutting down some trees for apples. I mean you know how it is. Day 76 I made 35 golden apples boy and headed to a nearby village to get the rest of the emeralds needed. I only needed five more emeralds which I found all in the chest actually and then I did a little bit of trade manipulation because I thought on breaking stuff would be really good. It was only the next day where I got on break two. Admittedly on breaking three would have been better, but I wasn't too fussed about it. After doing a couple of stick trades, I kind of overdid it a little bit, but I got myself enough for four on breaking two books and the emerald spare to be able to make the emerald neverite. And then on day 79, I headed back to the nether because for one last time, I had to get every single piece of neverite needed. And so I went neverite mining. Here we are on day 88 with 13 more pieces of neverite in ancient debris of course here's an interesting thing that happened as well i actually was able to trade with this goblin don't really know what it is basically for every four pieces of ancient debris he would give me five neverite scraps so uh yeah i wasn't really gonna complain about that also for the record with the neverite that i'm gonna make this time i'm gonna have 23 pieces of neverite 
made in one video. That is a um, a lot of the variety, if you ask me. Just a, just a couple of pieces, you know, no biggie. I got back on day 89. I did a level 30 enchant to get a sharpness-free book in which I put on a diamond axe. Also, it's worth mentioning, look at the foxhound asleep on the enchant table. That's just the most adorable thing ever. I turned the diamond axe into a golden neverite axe. And then I made diamond neverite anything. I was about as strong as I possibly could be. And then for the final few days, I just bred the pack out of hell. Like a pack out of hell! <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. If you watch this far, like seriously, I don't, I don't know why. Day 96, the final fight. And I knew by just seeing their full Neverite armor that this was going to be a long and difficult fight. But I did not come 96 days to die to these dweebs. And that's right, I'm going to call them dweebs. Austin, Marvin, you're watching this video? You guys are dweebs, what are you going to do about it? Cry? I think they're better crying right now. They, however, was more prepared this time. They had a better plan. Simple. Eradicate the pack out of hell. For the most part, at the start of this fight, I don't even think they cared that I was here. In fact, I may as well not have been, because for the first part of this fight, the two of them just single-handedly tried to kill every single one of the foxhounds that I had bred. And before I knew it, there was no pack. They were gone. Within five minutes, they eradicated every single one of them. And now it was just me, myself, and I. But I've done this before, and I'll do it again. I knew I could do this. I knew I could outlast them. However, one thing I've realized watching these videos back, these fights back, these hundred days back, is that every single time, there is one factor between me winning a fight and me losing a fight. The first time was that single piece of iron that gave me the shield. The second fight was the arrows that I had whilst they didn't have them. The third fight was, um, um, I don't know, Austin helping me kill Marvin. Mar Austin not having a shield. You know, say one of those two. Fourth time was the pack out of hell. All right, one more time. Like a pack out of hell. And this fight, the simple thing, the simple enchantment that I didn't even think was going to factor it that much was the fact that I had Unbreaking 2 on all of my armor. And even though it was 2v1, and even though my armor was getting hit more than their armor, my Unbreaking 2 helmet and boots outlasted Marvin's armor. And it wasn't easy, but I finally was able to take him down. This was a long fight. I'm shorting this down massively. Trust me, this fight was so long. However, this was not over because now my armor was starting to break and Austin quickly took all of Marvin's gear So I don't have anything spare to use I just had to hope that I could take out Austin with less armor and he had backup armor as well However, I just needed one moment one second where Austin would let him scar down and after attack after attack after attack one simple colliding of the axes and it was over. 